Welcome to this digital tour of my house. I'd like to start by acknowledging my respect for the traditional elders and ancestors and continuing cultural, spiritual and religious practices of the Noongar people on which this house is built. Thank you for joining me and um, I've got um, a number of slides I want to run through in terms of um, the performance of my house. I've started off with a summary slide which shows you some of the pictures, um, summer and winter, um, the Nathas rating and an acknowledgement to solar dwellings who designed the house, as well as some statistical information um, which is of relevance to various different um, aspects. I have um, selected a few areas to focus on and one of them is glazing. Um, glazing is normally recognised as the weakest point in the building fabric and so um, that, was led, that led me to that choice. One aspect of glazing which is often ignored is ultraviolet light. And I've previously seen the impact it can have on the internal finishings. So I decided in this case to spend some time researching um, different types of glazing in terms of its ability to stop ultraviolet light. There is information published by the manufacturer of the amount of ultraviolet light which is transmitted through various different types of glass and I've extracted from their website some inf relative information for the different types of glass available. Um, so I put into a tabular form all the different sorts of glass um, that, that's clear and the minimum thicknesses together with the ultraviolet light transmitted. Um, and I also included the U value and the solar heat gain coefficient. But as you can see, there is um, about half a dozen different sorts that transmit effectively no ultraviolet light at all. And so I restricted my choice to those and then looked for products with a very low U value and as high as possible solar heat gain coefficient. Um, so in the end, I finished up choosing Comfort Plus Clear 82 for the vast majority of the glazing in the house. So here's some more detailed information, um, indication of which areas, which directions the, um, the glass faces and all of the east, north and south facing glass um, has got low, it's got comfort plus. Um, and one of the things to understand is that the U value from the overall window is also has to take into account the value of the frame. So I put in here the specifics for the particular types of um, complete window systems that I've got in my house um, together with the direction in which they face as this sort of detailed information is available from a particular website which is listed down below. Another aspect of glazing which is probably going to become more and more important is to have a look at the impact of a bushfire alert level or bell um, on a particular property. Even with a very low bell rating, there is a requirement to put a certain type of glazing or a certain type of um, security screen over the area of the glazing. And as you move up to the higher levels, you eventually have to not only use toughened glass, but also to completely cover the, um, the area of glazing. Both of these have the effect of reducing the solar heat gain coefficient um, and that may have a 
significant impact in terms of how well the house performs um, in, in terms of um, letting heat in when you want it. Moving on to some more traditional areas in terms of windows, I've had a look, I've put some photos up here of the effects of different sorts of uh, window treatments. Um, I've used heavy drapes and an enclosed pelmet, and this gives me a um, very effective performance of the windows, probably effect, as, as effective as, solar, as double glazing. Uh, you can see in this left hand photograph how the, um, the condensation on the glass um, is an indication that the, uh, the curtain has kept a body of air trapped between the glass um, and the house overnight. Now the middle photograph shows you the inbuilt pelmet um, and the very heavy glazing, very heavy curtains. And on the right hand side was a thermal imaging camera shot, which shows you just how effective um, having dark, dark tiles on the floor is in capturing and retaining heat overnight. That was a photograph taken in the morning. And you can see that little blue strip um, very close to the door, which is the part that was exposed to the, the cold overnight. And probably the final element of windows is to make sure they're protected on the outside. Um, and so the northern glass in my house is protected out for three meters in summer with a shade sail, which comes down in winter. Um, the east and west glazing is best protected vertically during summer. And the, the middle photograph shows you a vertical awning um, in front of the study windows. And there's also some wind, wooden shutters that uh, I've made up myself that protect the southern windows from the cold in winter and also from this extreme heat in summer. Moving on to the electrical side of the house, um, I have over time put up uh, a total of 18 panels um, in different, uh, at different times and have been a net exporter of electricity in 2019. That situation um, has changed recently, which we'll get to in a minute. I've been using Enphase uh, Envoy for monitoring, and I'm at the moment in the process of upgrading to the maximum allowed by Synergy due to purchasing an electric vehicle. I am a member of the Electric Vehicle Association and managed to get a battery um, or some battery cells through them at a very cheap price and then had to get a, an inverter, a battery management system and have it all wired up. So I've now got a large home storage battery. Um, what I've discovered is that the Envoy that I use doesn't uh, distinguish between the power being put into the battery or coming out of the battery. Um, it sees the power going in as consumption um, and in fact it doesn't see the power coming out at all. So I'm going to have to, um, going to, have to get another um, monitoring system. The final major element in the electrical story is an electric vehicle, which I purchased a few months ago. And I do around about 20,000 Ks a year. And um, as a result, I'm going to need quite a lot of power. So I put a plug into the carriage and I just use a slow recharge into the car um, overnight, or sorry, from the battery overnight or from the panels during the day. Um, and I'm probably pretty much stopped exporting to the grid since getting the electric vehicle. And that's one of the reasons for doing the upgrade to give myself some more capacity. <laughs> 